Well, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship uh, for the United Parish on this really special day, Father's Day, a day uh, that will seem so different than maybe many other Father's Days. Uh, I'm the Reverend Johnny, and if this is your first time this morning uh, listening in or watching, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, and actually, for those who are listening on the phone line, it's great to have you uh, with us today. But the most special thing about today is that we are all together. Although we're gathering in our homes today, God unites us. But we're together in another way today. You see, we're blessed over these last number of months to have had kids' church services and then our services uh, for uh, all of our adults. Um, but today we just thought it would be really special on this day to have all of us together. And a big thank you, therefore, to the kids uh, and all those that are taking part in our service of celebration today. So Tim and Alwyn are going to be leading us today in our worship. Uh, Diane will be teaching us as well. So before I hand over to them today, let me begin by just praying that God will speak into our lives today. And boys and girls, as you know, if you've seen me in school, I have a very easy prayer drill that we follow. And mums and dads and grannies and grandpas, please feel free uh, to join in with it. We get our hands and we put them above our heads and we go clap and we bring them down past our eyes. We close our eyes and as we bring them down past our nose, we bow our heads. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Father's Day, we gather in our homes with joy to acknowledge that you are the Father we've always longed for and need. Our most loving and engaged fathers have been wonderful in how they have pointed us to you and how you love your children. But they could never be to us what you alone are. And then our most broken uh, fathers cannot rob our hearts today of the joys that we find in knowing you as we call out today, Abba Father. So Father God, as we come to you on this special day, we pray that through our prayers, through your word to us, and through your Spirit's guidance, we may know the Father's love as we worship you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, I'm so glad that we can join together in this time of worship. Um, let's begin this time uh, by a reflection of the, the Father heart of God for us, the, the sacrificial, loving Father heart of God. And let's, let's join together and let's sing how deep the Father's love for us.
for us to join together um, and kids it's time to get up get rid of the actions uh, we're going to do the incredible song we want to see Jesus lifted high and I know every single one of you know the actions to this parents as well so let's let's join together um, and let's declare that we want to see Jesus lifted high we want to see him be a banner that flies across this land that all men might see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven We want to see, 
We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Good morning and I'd like to add my welcome to Johnny's and if you don't know who I am, my name is Diane and I'm the Youth and Families Associate here at the United Parish. So as Johnny said, today's service is going to be a little bit different to the ones we've had over recent weeks. Um, today we're thinking about fathers and in fact I really wanted to think a little bit wider than that. So we're actually going to think about some male role models in our lives. And for many of us that might be our dads, but that's not necessarily the case for all of us. So maybe our dad isn't around. Um, so it might be our granddad that we're thinking of, it might be a family friend, it might be an uncle. Somebody like that who's been a really great encouragement to you. But whoever it is, today is a great opportunity to recognise their part in your lives and to thank them. So, I've been wondering, who do you look up to? Who inspires you? Who encourages you? I asked some of our children and young people that question. So let's find out what they said. Jesse Lingard because he plays for a great team, Man United. He's quite short and plays on the wing sometimes, but most of the time he plays midfield, like me. The person I admire the most is my daddy, Neil Stuart David Jess. I love him very much and he loves me too very much. I love the way he takes me to the park every night with Murphy. He works very hard every time Mum says no to the ice cream van when he comes on to our street. Dad always says yes. I love you, Dad. I admire this person because he plays so many different instruments. And I love music as well, so... And he's very friendly and he knows lots of jokes and he's very funny and he knows how to cheer me up. So this, this is my granddad, Bobby. We have many, many role models in our lives, many people who might inspire us. And as a child, when I first moved to Northern Ireland with my mum and my two sisters, I was 10 years old. And there was one particular man who that person, that role model became evident in. Um, I met him at church and he became really important to me and my family. And it was my minister, Jan Taylor. Some of you might have heard of Jan Taylor or might have known Jan. Sadly, he's no longer with us. But this man was kind, he was caring, he was full of fun. And he was the reason I went to church. The reason I discovered Jesus and probably the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing today. I'm sad that I never really got to tell him that, but one day I know I will. But the Bible is full of male role models, men who were like fathers to others. For example, there was Barnabas who encouraged John Mark. There was Joseph who was Jesus' stepdad who brought him up as his own son, helping him to grow and become the person that God was shaping him to be. There's lots of people that we can learn from in the Bible, but one of my favourites is a man called Paul. So instead of our Bible reading today, we're going to watch a short video from Saddleback Kids about Paul's life. But you can read about it in Acts chapter 9, about this conversion, what happened to Paul. It's, he's also evident and, and really you'll see a lot of, of Paul's writings in much of the New Testament. But now we're going to watch this video and discover a little bit about who Paul is and how God changed him. Stories of the Bible, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. 
He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way, and as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt. And he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God. And he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. I love this story of Paul. And although Paul wasn't a dad, he became a great role model to lots of people, especially to young men called Timothy and Titus. And he called them his sons, sons of faith. Um, and these men's lives were shaped by God who used Paul and his teaching to transform them. And he, he used Paul to transform so many, not just people in the Bible, but people today who read um, all about God, all the stuff that Paul has written. And I love that Paul wasn't perfect, because none of us are, and not even the role models that we look up to, not even some of the role models that the kids have mentioned. Um, definitely not our dads, they're not perfect, and we're all very human and we all make mistakes. So we need to be careful that we don't look for perfection in our fathers or our male role models, because we're gonna become very disappointed. But I love the fact that although Paul started out as somebody who detested Jesus and all his followers, he then encountered God and he was transformed. In fact, you can't help but be transformed when you encounter Jesus. And we read about it all the time in the New Testament. Everybody who met Jesus came away a different person. You know, Paul actually became the person he was trying to destroy. And I love that no matter what mistakes we've made or how much we've messed up, we learn and see in Paul's life that God's forgiveness is there for us all and nothing can separate us from God's love. Because like Paul, God sees something in you. He sees a purpose in your life. He sees the person that you can be with his help. And today we think about role models. I want to ask you a question. And it's not who do you look up to, but it's who looks up to you. No matter how old you are, if you're five, if you're 10, if you're 17, 18, if you're an adult, whatever it is, whatever age, it doesn't matter. There will be somebody in your life who looks up to you. And it might be a friend, it might be a sibling. But who are you setting the example to? And are you setting a good example? And that's a question for all of us not just dads. So I want to dare you to be courageous like Paul, to step out in faith and see what purpose and adventure God has planned for your life. You know, we're gonna think a little bit later about God the Father 
um, about that perfect role model. But before we do that, we're just going to have some worship now. We're going to have Regan and Madison and Georgia, and they're going to lead us in our next song. It's called Brave, and I love the words, and it won't be a song that we're familiar with in church, but the kids will be familiar with it because we've been learning it at Kids Church. Um, so please do join in, and there'll be lots of actions for you to take part in. for leading us. So I asked some of our children and youth to describe the characteristics of someone they look up to, a role model in their life and this is what they had to say. This person is funny, kind, helpful, sporty and almost never grumpy. He is my dad. This person I look up to ever since the day I met them is hardworking, funny, kind, caring, faithful and leads his life by God every single day. And at the end of the week still manages to sit down with his family and watch some TV. This is my dad. Happy Father's Day. This person is very kind to me but always reminds me of, he always looks for high fives. He always brings Murphy dog food, but he supports Liverpool. 
This man is Colin Ferguson. This person always cheers me up when I am sad. And when I fall out with my friends, he helps me get back together with them. And he always plays with me when I won't do any well half the time. And he works very hard rescuing people and rescuing animals from trees and everything. This is my daddy. This is a person that I love and he he likes he's he likes to take me walks and he's very funny and he likes money United. This is a picture of my granddad. This person is kind, helpful, brave, and he loves making cheesecake and he brings me fishing. He is my daddy. He's kind. He's helpful. He's thoughtful. He teaches me to ride my bike. He tickles me. He's my dad. I just love some of those videos. Um, I, I love just hearing about the people they admire. And uh, I wonder if some of you are watching that thinking, oh, I think they're talking about me or, oh, I don't know who they're talking about and then you realise that it's you. Um, you know, some of us have great relationships with our dads and some of us really struggle. But over the years, I've come to know and trust my heavenly father to be the perfect father. And here's a few reasons why. Because first of all, God is trustworthy. In Proverbs 3 verse 5, it says that we should trust the Lord with all of our heart and not to depend on our own understanding. It's a memory verse that we did in church a wee while ago. You know, Jesus always trusted his dad, even when he wasn't sure about what was going to happen to him. He knew that God's plan was the best plan and he knew that he could trust him. You know, whenever I first moved here, um, I was thinking and chatting with Luke about the whole idea of moving. And I remember thinking, gosh, are we going to move back to Ballyclare, like back to Northern Ireland? Do we really want to do that? And I was a little bit nervous, you know, leaving somewhere that I loved leaving um, the really good weather to come to Northern Ireland. And then, you know what, we did it anyway. We stepped out in faith and we trusted God because we knew with all our heart that God said we had to come here. And now there's just been such blessing. For those of you who knew us, you'll know there's just been such blessing in our lives recently. And um, it just wouldn't have happened if we hadn't stepped out and trust God. I don't know what about you, but I just wanna ask you the question, have you stepped out in faith and trusted God with your life? Because I can guarantee you that when you do, it'll be an adventure and it will definitely lead you to places that you won't expect. But it'll be good. It'll be really good for you. The second thing is that our Heavenly Father is a source of encouragement. I trust him and I love him because he's a source of encouragement. Throughout the Bible, God wants to encourage us. In fact, he wants to help us to be the best person we can be and to live the best life possible. You know, Jesus tells us in John chapter 10, verse 10, we're told that, that he's come, that we might have life, and it's a life to the full. And a life to the full is a life that has a relationship with God the Father, that allows God to lead us. You know, God's word always encourages and helps us, but I find that sometimes we need to hear it from people too. And I find that often God brings people into our lives with an encouraging word right when we need it. So I want to encourage you, who can you encourage today? Children, who can you encourage? Can you think of somebody that you can go and say a kind word to? That you can go and do something lovely for? And it might be your dad's because it is Father's Day. It might be your granddad. It might be somebody that you know in your life that lives in your house. Or maybe they don't live in your house and you're going to write them a wee card or a wee letter. Or you can send them a wee video. But it would be really good for you to think of who can you encourage today? The other reason that I just knew and trust my Heavenly Father is that he's always there for me. He was, he's always there for all of us. Even in difficult times, God is always there for us. Even in the times when we think, you know, I just can't sense his presence. And I love that even when Jesus found things difficult, and he did, 
but he knew he could always retreat. He knew he could always go off and find a quiet place and spend time with his heavenly father and God would just be there with him. He would be there encouraging him. You know, God's word promises us that God will never leave us, never forsake us. No matter what's going on in our lives, we know that we can always depend on him. So if you're struggling, I want to encourage you to run into your father's arms. Your heavenly father is there waiting for you. He loves you very much and he's always there. And the final thing is that God, the perfect father, always has our best interests at heart. Now sometimes that's hard to think. Now children, I don't know about you, but there's times if you ever asked your dad for something and he says, no, you can't have it, and you just have a wee tantrum, you just think, like seriously, why not? You know, well, our Heavenly Father has our best interests at heart. And sometimes we might not like what God wants to do with our lives, but it's all back to knowing who God is, isn't it? It's all back to knowing what his motives are. You know, you know that your dad might say no to something because at the end of the day, he knows it's probably not right for you. And actually, our Heavenly Father is exactly the same. Our Heavenly Father knows what's right for us because he can see way into our future. He sees the bigger picture. He is the only one who knows what's good for us. And he wants to give us good things. That's his heart. His heart is always to give us good things. He loves us very much. He wants to give us a life that is great. So today on Father's Day, as we celebrate those amazing role models in our lives, let's not forget our Heavenly Father who loves you so very much and wants the best for you. You can trust him. And I really hope and pray that you do. So let's say our statement of faith together. We're just gonna say who we believe and why we believe in them. Um, so let's, let's say it together. The words are gonna come up on the screen. We believe in God the Father, the maker of all things. We believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, Lord and Saviour of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life and light. We belong to the church, God's family, everywhere. Amen. And now we're going to pray. So let's pray together and the Wells family are going to lead us. Father God, I just want to thank you that you love us deeply. I want to pray for everybody who might be finding today a struggle. I pray, Lord, that you will be with them, that they know your comfort. Father God, we celebrate um, those fathers um, who are just striving to do all that they can for their children. Lord, we celebrate those men, those male role models in our lives who really make a difference. Um, Father God, we thank you so much for them. We just pray that you will bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, we give thanks for the fathers in our lives. For those who are fathers, we ask that you give them wisdom, patience, humility and compassion. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. Make them a role model and a hero for their children to, to aspire to. We pray this in your name. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all the time that our fathers spend with us when we were growing up. We thank them for their guidance and understanding in our formative years. We pray that you will look after them and keep them in good health. We pray that you will always be there to comfort them and that they will know that your love is never ending. We pray for all those would-be fathers who are waiting their first child and we pray that you will guide them and support them in their journey ahead. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, look down on all men this Father's Day as we struggle with the many challenges that the coronavirus has presented to us. We are all in the same storm, but we are in different boats. Some fathers face financial ruin with sleepless nights, worrying how to provide for their family. Lockdown has strained many relationships within families. Countless men have lost loved ones to this dreadful virus with no proper goodbyes. Others are trying to cope with their own health problems. Many men are suffering in silence with deep mental health issues. But Heavenly Father, these exceptional times have shown us how thankful we are to have our families, friends and good neighbours. After the pain of separation, what joy to be reunited with our loved ones. 
The rainbow has become a symbol of hope that things will get better. Let us use this time to mend our relationships with you, our Father. Let us take time to read our Bible, to spend more time in daily prayer, and to listen to the still, small voice of your Holy Spirit. Reassure us that we are not alone, and that we guide us through the, these worrying times. We pray that we will come through this storm a more faithful servant to you, our Father. Amen. We're just going to close our prayers with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that God taught us. Let's close our eyes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So before we draw our service to a close, I just want to wish you a very happy Father's Day. Children, I hope you've got lots of fun things planned for your dad today. And I do look forward to seeing you all soon. Um, and Tim is going to lead us in our final song before Johnny closes with the blessing. But before that, we have a little message from some of our children. Happy Father's Day! 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 Let's finish our time together with the, the incredible song that was introduced to us last week. Um, it's called I Build My Life. It begins, worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise that we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe. We live for you. What an incredible declaration of our submission to the wonderful glory of Jesus Christ. So let's finish on this incredible... Uh, declaration of the perfection that is found in Jesus. Jesus, the only one who could ever see.
Well, folks, I hope and pray that you've had a great day with us, and I hope and pray that you have a great day, whatever you're going off to do. Remember that if you can join us at 12 o'clock today, it would be great to chat online using Zoom. The details are in our news sheet, uh, and just to join us uh, for a chat and a coffee. Uh, and also remember another exciting thing that's coming up next Sunday evening, that's the, the 28th, um, we're going to have the chance to come together uh, socially distant in our cars uh, and to worship as joint churches in Ballyclare. And that's going to take place next Sunday evening at 7pm uh, in the Six Mile Leisure Centre car park in Ballyclare. Uh, so please come along uh, and join in in an hour of worship uh, and teaching. You'll be more than welcome. And so let me just pray God's blessing over us now as we finish. Let's pray. Listen to what the Lord says. I have loved you with an everlasting love and still I maintain my unfailing love towards you. I will lead you beside quiet streams and down smooth, uncluttered paths so that you will not stumble. For I have become a father to you and you are my child. Go from here, therefore, in confidence knowing that the love of God, the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with you today. Amen.